Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we're going to set up the Unbound DNS server on NetBSD. So the first thing you want to do is uh, after doing an install without X11, which is what I've done here, we're going to log in as root and make sure that you have an IP address here on your interface. You're going to want that to be a static address. Make sure you have a default route real quick out to the internet. We do. And uh, make sure that um, you have a DNS server. All right. So we can all verify that with a ping real quick. All right. So what we're going to actually do to set this up is with Unbound in NetBSD at least, it is included in the base installation. So all we really have to do is create a config file for it. So we're going to vi etsy unbound unbound conf. You can um, use another editor. You don't have to use this one. This is just what I prefer. Now we this is divided into clauses. So we're going to do server colon and this is our first server clause. <clears throat> Excuse me. And under that we want to tab in into interface colon and this is where the server is going to listen for DNS queries. We're going to use every uh, interface on this server. So, zero, 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 zero. Every interface. So that also includes any interface we add in the future. If you want it on one, just put the IP of that one interface in there. Under this, we need to put access-control. These are referring to the source IP addresses from clients that um, will be accepted. So that we'll be allowed to query this DNS server. Now we're going to start with our LAN subnet here. So 192.168.0.0 slash 24. That's the cider for it. And say allow. And this is our main subnet we want to have access. Remember, even if this server is on a separate subnet in your network, either IPv4 or 6, you still have to add a subnet entry to allow this and access control. So it's not just the subnet the server is on, it's any subnet that will be the source of packets, the source address. So otherwise you will not be able to use the server correctly. So access control, we want to have loopback be able to use it. That's for if we want to locally resolve with this. The IPv6 loopback is also allowed, but we want to... Um, deny everything else with this statement. We want to deny. You can also refuse, but deny is what I prefer. And we want to deny every other IPv6 network. All right. And again, if you had a guest network, just put that subnet in as a allow. All right. All we're doing right now is allowing one subnet loopback, allowing the IPv6 for loopbacks, v4 and v6, and denying everything else. IPv4 and 6. So that's the server uh, base done. Um, in order for this to actually get queries in its uh, zone file to give to our clients, we need to add a forward zone clause. So forward dash zone. And then under this, we add forward dash adder. And these are DNS servers that are upstream from the server. So these can be things like 42222, or like, uh, let's see, 8888, things like that. So th they can be many things. They can even be like, for instance, another internal server like this. Uh, that's fine too, as one of your backups. But um, that's the main thing is, this is where it's going to forward a query and turn into a DNS client because that's what DNS servers do. They're servers and their clients if they don't know the query to be answered. So we have forward adder, 4221. And I'm going to put in here forward dash first. Yes. And the thing is, if this can't reach one of these servers in the forward adder, it will go out to the root name servers directly and start a full recursive query. This is okay behavior. This is acceptable. So I would recommend you set this to yes. Um, the default is no, but it's okay to set it to yes. 
All right, we also need to specify what uh, zone this is for, the forward adders. So we're going to say name, colon, space, and then quote, and then a dot. Then have them there in the middle. This means all domain names, and then all domain names will be forwarded onto these DNS servers if Unbound doesn't have an answer in its cache, or if it doesn't actually have its own local zone for that domain name, and we'll get into that in a second. So let's save all that. Let's go into etcrc conf because you want to make sure you enable this. So unbound equals yes in all caps, just like that. Try to start this here. And there we go. Now you should at this point be able to see that it's listening and it's listening on 53. All right. So to test our server, let's look at our interface here and look at UDP port 53. And I'll just bring up my client and do ns lookup, set our server to be 192.168.0.1, you know, whatever your IP is of the, is of the server. And then we're going to do uh, Google, for instance. So this is my client source address, and this is the source port and the destination IP address of the server and the source port. So this is the DNS query here, and this is asking what is the A record of the zone uh, google.com, that domain name. And my server doesn't have that in its cache right now, so it just goes out and turns into a DNS client, and then it sends to 4222 to the first one in that forward adder. And it's saying the same thing. Hey, what's uh, the IPv4 address of google.com? What's the A record? And then that upstream uh, server responds back to our unbound server. And then the unbound server gets the A record and puts it in its cache as well. So at this point, it becomes a DNS server. DNS servers resolve and they can answer queries directly. So from there, after it got the answer, it sends this back to our clients of the A record of google.com and then our client go, of course, as for the quad A, we don't have IPv6 in this example, but if you did, it's the same concept on that. So, but what I want you to understand, we have a client, it can query things as a server and then be a server as well. At this point, it is a server, in fact. So, from there, we're going to talk about one more important aspect, because um, as we can see, we did get the answer. But if I query it again, we can get the answer directly from the server, and we don't really have to ask uh, again. It's a quicker process. So it's cached. And that's the whole uh, concept. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to make our own uh, domain zones in Unbound. And then that way you can just respond with that zone. Now we're going to go back to that config file. And in the server clause, um, go ahead and, and enter down and tab in. And we're going to make local dash zone and then a colon. And in quotes, we're going to have, in this case, somebadsite.com. This could be an internal resource, etc. But the local zone is the domain name, and the type at the end there is static. And we're going to do local data for this zone, which is going to be somebadsite.com. It is IN for an internet record. That's its type in DNS. And then it's an A record for IPv4. The A, the... The value of the A record, the IPv4 address, is going to be 127.0.0.1. And then we'll wrap that in one last um, quote. And we're going to do local data pointer. And then have a colon. Some, I'm sorry, 127.0.0.1 goes to somebadsite.com and end that there. Now, why does this matter? Well, there's many reasons. One of them is this is how email servers, when they're looking at domains to find out if they're spam, if that DNS server has that 
domain blacklisted, it on purpose sends back 127.002. So the reason that is is because then the mail server knows it's not going to send there. It knows it's a spam domain. Well, that's one of the reasons. We could block sites we don't want users having access to, you know? So in this case, they wouldn't be able to access their own loopback. It doesn't have a web server on it, and it's not even where they intended to go. But this is also used when you have a company where you are managing their domain and people on the internet, the WAN, you want them to have a different reply on the outside compared to the inside. You want the clients on the inside to get the local address of the server, maybe in the DMZ or the office. And the outside, you want them to still use public DNS servers. So this is why we do this. So let's save this. Let's say unbound dash check comp. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and restart unbound. Let's check real quick. Make sure it's listening. Yep. All right. All right. Now, if we resolve Google, the same process happens. But if we resolve somebadsite.com with this DNS server, we get back 127.001. The reason is, is because it saw the local zone, the domain zone, we set up in there. And then it used that to answer. So, here. Now, in this case, I do need to talk to you about the forward first option. It did try to forward that. That's, if you don't want that to happen, go ahead and do forward first no, and then it will not. But um, upstream, it didn't know what that domain is. So it got the answer from its own zone, uh, domain zones, its zone file. And then I went ahead and sent back the answer to the client. But what I'm trying to explain here is that if you don't want that query to be sent upstream, say no, and then it will look here first. All right. So that is how we set up Unbound and a little bit about how we do with things like um, hosting our own uh, zones. The reasons why you do this. All right. So uh, with all that, I hope it was helpful. And as always, it's been Tyler with T-Tech. And have a very nice day.